In this video, we're going to take a look at the contour blend tool within Carve Code Maker Plus. This tool is very good at creating prismatic shapes and preserving internal corners. Let me explain that to you. So normally, let's say this star that I have on the screen here, I would go into the shape editor, select it, and then do a square. From the top, that looks absolutely fine. But if I rotate around, you can see that I have this little peak, which comes up at a steeper angle, and it's not a perfect star. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to use the contour blend to do it and look at the difference. So if I go to here, the contour blend tool, you can see straight away, this comes up to the center in a uniform fashion. So it creates a perfect internal corner there. So to use this tool, you can see that I've got the linear option on, which just creates an angled wall. And I can change the angle of that. It drops it down. I never really change the angle of this, to be completely honest with you. I find it easier to just create the angle at 45 and then just go to the scale relief and just drop it down or bring it up to whatever I want. Let's take a look at the next option now, which is round. So if I cancel that, go to the shape editor now, and I'm going to do a round profile. What you can see here is that I've got all these lumps, what we would call in the shape editor, and it's not really giving me a great shape. It's not really what I want. I want these pieces to come to the center. So if I cancel that, I can do this with the contour blend. So if we go to round, you can see that it all comes up and into the center. And it gives me quite a detailed design by just doing that. You can also select vectors for this. So if I deselect that, and I'm going to just create a squiggly line here, let's say like that, it can be anything this and then go back to the contour blend i'm going to select a vector select that as the vector click set profile vector and then i'll get a tick and then i'm going to select that and then what you can see what's happened here is that it's basically done the same thing but it's used this as sort of a cross section going in now you can change these figures. So if you want to change the height, now again, I would probably just use the Z height for this, but if you wanted to, you could change the height like so, and it will update in real time. If you want to change the width, then you can click there to override it. The overall width from here to here, is going to be 2.48. Let's change that to say one, and you can see that it changes the shape. If I want to make it larger, let's say four, you can see it stretches that out over the four inches. Now I'm just going to cancel that for a second and then go back to the contour blend. And I'm going to turn this preserved interior corners off. And you'll see what happens, let's just turn those off, is that it goes back to how the shape editor looks. And it will give you this lumpy bit, so it doesn't preserve the interior corners. So I would recommend always leaving that on. You also have the combined modes, which I've covered in another video. So I'll link to that in the description. And then once you're done, press apply, and then you can exit the tool. 
Now, probably the main reason that this tool was created in the first place is because of text. A lot of people that were doing text were, say, creating shape edit text, let's say on this H on the left. Go to the shape editor, I'll do a square bit of text, and you can see that it sort of shoots up here and it, it gives this sort of lumpy effect on the text and it's not very desirable and you can see it sort of changes the shape you don't really notice it at first but after a while you start to notice this so i'm going to apply that and cancel it and then the h that's on the right hand side let's use the contour blend with that and you can see that it gives me a perfect internal corner and it's not coming up exactly the same so let's turn those off and compare them so you can see the difference so this is the main reason that this tool was created and you can see here from a top-down view that the shape is considerably different on those internal pieces now, I'll give you an example now of something where this is really, really useful for doing prismatic shapes. Let's say, for instance, the United States Space Force, the logo on that, or the Star Trek logo. So if I go to create a polygon, and I'll just snap to the center, and let's bring that out to there. I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to right click on that node and I'm going to delete that node. I'm going to delete that node and then here, down the bottom, I'm going to insert a mid node. And then I'm going to select that and if I press Alt down on the keyboard, I can maintain that center. So I'll move that up to let's say about there now I'll show you with the shape editor so you can see this so if we go to the shape editor do a square you can see if I take a look from the plan view it's not far away but this this point here you can see that it sort of curves up and it's not really what we want so I'm going to cancel that, go to the contour blend, and you can see straight away gives me that perfect shape. I can apply that and cancel it, and then just drop the height down to whatever I want. It's a really, really easy way to create these sorts of prismatic shapes. So that's the contour blend tool that is in. Half code maker plus.